Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Oh, my goodness. That was the first sip of the day. Good stuff. Oh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray you're all doing well this morning. Oh, well, looks like it's going to be a nice day today. Might get a little bit of rain here and there. But hey, let me know where you're from. Let me know uh, maybe maybe the church you go to or just the city that you're in. Uh, I'll put a pin on the board, and uh, I need to get that get that up and going. I've got a whole list of names, uh, somebody uh, of where all the people are from, and uh, it's it's getting out there. So I, uh, and it's really just for my curiosity, and I want to show my daughters how far things can go. Uh, but anyway. Uh, hope and pray you're all doing well this morning. Let's get to the Word today. Uh, we're going to have a reading in Psalms, and then we're going to go to Job, and then the Gospel of Mark. So, I click on my calendar, and it takes me to the webpage. And by the way, I'm going to have, I'll have some links underneath the video uh, to show where I get this. I, I, I read from the uh, Revised Common Lectionary every morning. Uh, and there'll be some links underneath uh, to where you can get that on your smart device if that's what you like. Um, I'm reading from the ESV this morning. We're going to go to Psalm 102, verses 12 through 28. So let me get a little coffee here. <clears throat> All right. Psalm 102, verses 12 through 28. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold her stones dear. <sighs> Excuse me. And have pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord. And all the kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord that he looked down from his holy height. From heaven, the Lord looked at earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when peoples gather together and kingdoms to worship the Lord. He has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. O oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days. You whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. <clears throat> but you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you. All right. Next, we're going to go back to the Old Testament. Uh, in the book of Job. So we're going to chapter Job chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Oh, that my vexation were weighed, and all my calamity laid in the balances. For then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are in me. My spirit drinks their poison. The terrors of, of God are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when he, gra when he has grass, or the ox low over his fodder? Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt, or is there any taste in the, in the juice of the, of the mallow? My appetite refuses to touch them. They are as food that is loath loathsome to me. Oh, that I might have request, and that God would fulfill my hope that it would please God to crush me, that he would let loose his hand <clears throat> and cut me off. This would be my comfort. I would even exult in pain unsurpassing. 
Oh, unsparring. For I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait? And what is my end that I, I should be patient? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh bronze? Have I any help in me when recourse is driven from me? All right, a little coffee. Next, we're going to go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. And here we go. And Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him. And he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. And this is the word of the Lord. Once again, I read the prayer of the day from the Pray Now app. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, your servant Silas preached the gospel along the, along the apostles Peter and Paul to the peoples of Asia Minor, Greece, and Macedonia. We give you thanks for raising up in this and every land evangelists and heralds of your kingdom that the church may continue to proclaim the unsearchable riches of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> the Pray Now app often has some little excerpts in here, and you heard the prayer mention Silas, and uh, there's a little excerpt here, and I'd like to share that with you. Uh, Silas, fellow worker of St. Peter and St. Paul. Silas, a leader in the church at Jerusalem, was chosen by Paul, uh, that's in Acts 1540, uh, to accompany him on his second missionary journey from Antioch to Asia Minor and Macedonia. Silas, also known as Silvanus, was imprisoned with Paul and Philippi and experienced the riots in Th Thessalonica and Berea. After rejoining Paul in Corinth, Silas apparently remained there for an extended time. Sometime later, he apparently joined the Apostle Peter, likely serving as Peter's secretary. Uh, that's in 1 Peter 5.12. Tradition says that Silas was the first bishop at Corinth. Interesting. It's always neat to learn new, well, interesting things like that. So anyway, well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you all have a fantastic day. So with that, y'all be safe, be happy, be blessed. We'll see you tomorrow on Coffee in the Word. God bless him.